So you've taken a sample of your amine and it looks like this. This is really easy to tell that something has gone wrong and you need to fix it. But what happens if the amine looks like this and things are still going wrong? Well, there's lots of ways that we can't see what's going on unless we dig into the details. Let's have a look. Welcome to the Experts Network. Welcome back to the Experts Network. My name is Steve Ayers. I'm a process engineer with Amine Experts. And today we're gonna to talk about amine analysis and why it's important for your plant. So far through these videos, we've talked a lot about the kind of operating conditions you need to run at and how you need to monitor your plant to keep it operating properly. But what happens when you take those operating conditions, take the resulting DCS data, put them into your simulation and things still aren't lining up? Well, there's one piece left that we haven't looked at, and that's the amine chemistry. We're talking now about your amine strength, the loading, any heat stable salts. These are all things you can't get from your DCS data, and that's where sampling becomes very important. Before we can start looking at the different tests and analysis, the first most important thing we have to do is take the sample itself. For this, we wanna find a line or a location that is flowing. You, know, you can't be looking at a dead leg. You don't want long lines of piping that are not flowing because we need to get a representative sample of what's actually in the piping. To do this, ideally we want what's one of these here is a sample station. These are great because they've already got that purge line built in where they're gonna be constantly flowing and you're gonna be able to pull that nice sample of a good clean amine. What you don't want is to pull a bunch of black amine that's going to settle out to the bottom or it's got a bunch of junk that's going to fill out to the top that shouldn't be there just because of where you took the sample point. So if you take a look at this video here, what's a good example though is where you purge and purge and purge, but it's still black. That's going to happen. That's now indicating that you just have a black amine sample that needs to be fixed. Once you get that sample, there's two types of analysis we can look at. There's the on-site testing and there's the off-site analysis in which you're gonna get a full look at your amine. On-site, the very first thing we're gonna look at once we have that sample is what does it look like? What you hopefully are gonna see is this right here. It's a nice clear amine, maybe a slight teaish color, but overall, everything looks quite fine. Where we start to get issues is when you start to get coloration. So like the very first thing here we're going to look at is a yellow amine. The yellow amine typically means you've got elemental sulfur going on or you're starting to see low levels of degradation. Eventually it could turn into this, which is an orange amine, which means you're getting high levels of degradation, whether it's oxygen based or thermal based. Either way, this is now an issue you need to look at. Where things really become a problem is the next one here, is a green amine. Once you get a green amine, this is an indication that you have H2S corrosion going on within the system. So that's bad for two reasons. One, you have corrosion going on. Two, this is a lean loading sample. That H2S should all be gone. So it's, it's showing you're not getting good regenerator performance right now. The last and final one we showed you right at the very beginning here is this black amine. This is the worst option of all because your amine now is not only degrading, corroded, it could just be full of solids and you're generating solids faster than you're filtering them out. The last thing you want to look at here is in any of these samples, are you getting solid particulates? Are you forming a layer here on the bottom like you can see in the sample here? Or are you getting a bunch of hydrocarbons and getting a hydrocarbon layer up the top here which you can see as well? All of these different samples are really great indicators and helpful for the operators. But what's really key is that they need to do this on a regular basis. They need to be taking these samples, you know, weekly or even twice a week and watching what the color is doing. Is the color changing on a gradual basis? Does the color have a really abrupt sudden change? If it's gradual, it means you have something continuously going on in the system that needs to be looked at. If it's an abrupt change, it means you've really just had an upset event it might not come back, but you really need to go dig and investigate to why that happened in the first place. So now you've pulled yourself a nice clean sample. Everything looks good. You're really happy with the results you got. Well, does that mean everything's fine and you're ready to rock? Well, no, not necessarily. We're going to take a case here where we pulled this sample from a system, the lean sample. Everything looked happy. Everything looked good. The aiming strength came out nice. We were pretty happy with that. But then we took a rich sample and you got this ugly dark green thing. Well, what happened? If you look back to the video my colleague Mike Sheelan did, you can see it linked up here, he talked about the iron cycle and how things move around an amine plant. 
So what's happening here is the, the amine itself is still full of soluble iron. So coming off the regenerator, that lean amine has no H2S left for it to react with. So you get this nice clean looking amine, but it's full of iron. Once that iron comes into contact with the H2S you're absorbing out of the contactor, you end up with this iron sulfide solution turning it green. It's really easy to see what's going on, but this is quite bad for your plant. Now that we've gone over the different ways we can look at the amine sample and what it means, the second most important test that's done on site is the amine strength. This is typically done through a titration method inside the lab through a procedure provided by your vendor. An alternative to that that we have found is the use of one of these, this is a digital refractometer. These are actually really quite handy because you can just do it on the spot, grab a sample, put a couple drops in, get a result. Where they really struggle though is if you get the dirty amines, if you get the black amines, because we're talking about refraction, they do not work very well with a contaminated amine. Once you have your amine strength, it is a very key operating factor because this is how the operators determine, do I need to add more amine? or we need to add more water, to keep the chemistry, the overall chemistry of the system right in line. What these tests don't tell you though, is how the heat stable salts and degradation products are affecting those results. If you start getting too high in your degradation products, you're gonna see an artificially high amine strength compared to what you're actually using in the system. If your heat stable salts are too high, it's gonna do the reverse. It's gonna drop the effective amine strength you actually have in the system. To really see the full picture, you need to package that amine up and send it to an offsite lab to get a full analysis done. When you send it to an offsite lab, you're gonna get a pile of information. They're gonna give you a full accurate amine strength, including the main amine you're using and any secondary amines that make up the blend. You're gonna get a complete lean loading for both the H2S and CO2. You're gonna get the degradation products. Are you getting other amines that shouldn't be there, glycols that shouldn't be there? This is really, really important for an amine like DGA because it's also gonna get you something like the BHEEU, which is the urea content. And this is how you evaluate how well your reclaimer cycle is working in the system. Beyond that, you're gonna get heat stable salts, not just the overall, but each individual type and how much of them there are. You're gonna get your metals. Do you have a lot of iron? Do you have a lot of chrome? These are very important to tell you if you have carbon steel or stainless steel corrosion going on in the plant. You're also gonna get total suspended solids and some foam tendency of the overall amine. That is a pile of information. And at the end of the day, you're gonna get presented with something like this, which is just a spreadsheet full of numbers that doesn't really tell you a lot other than here's exactly the numbers that are going on. What is key out of this is you need to get a proper thorough interpretation of what those numbers mean. And this can come either in the form of, you know, a cover letter with some highlights or a full detailed analysis report of every single line item and what it means. What's key to understand though is that this is just a snapshot of when you took that sample. It is very, very important that you not only do these analysis, but you do them routinely so you can build trends and monitor how the system is changing over time. We recommend about every three to four months, you get a complete full analysis done. And as a part of that full analysis, then you can go through and you can trend. So like we see here with this amine strength, so over the period of you know a couple months or a couple years even, you can see exactly how the amine trend is flowing up and down and staying nicely within that range where you wanna keep it. If you start seeing sharp changes, well, you know that you're having a lot of upsets in your plant that you need to remedy right away. The other key thing out of trending is heat stable salts. It's really key for letting you know, do you need to be neutralizing right now? Do you need to be organizing a reclaiming schedule? or are things just getting out of control and you need to dump your amine altogether. Hopefully you don't get to that point, but the only way you're really gonna know is if you start analyzing on a routine basis and trending that data. So to summarize everything, it is very important that you sample on a routine basis. Not only are you able to then monitor exactly how your amine is looking and performing, you're getting a lot of detailed information that really dictates how the amine performs and whether or not you need to step in as an engineer or an operator and make changes to the system to improve the overall performance of your plant. Thank you everybody for watching. If you can please go ahead and subscribe below and ring that bell, that'd be greatly appreciated. Until next time.